Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you've noticed the news. Did you know that there is a tropical depression coming at us? So, on Sunday, it originally was forecasted to be here Sunday morning, then Sunday afternoon, then late Sunday afternoon, and now it's late Sunday evening. So, we're just going to look at the trend. It's probably going to get here Monday. 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 Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are in AP world. we got a lot to do. So, if we don't have school one day, guess where you're going to click on to get your information? Canvas. Canvas. So, now... If we don't have school on Monday, I don't know anything. I'm of no importance. I'm a high school history teacher in one classroom here at Plant High School. No one cares about my opinion, but I'm just trying to plan ahead. Yes? If we don't have school on Monday, your assignments are still due on Tuesday. Is everyone clear on that? We're not bumping it back. We're not going to casually, like, oh, my God, we had no school. Uh, my brain's dead. No. Everything is still due. Um, on Monday, I would do primary. So guess what I'll be doing at home? I'm going to be home doing a primary source, and I'm going to upload my lecture to Canvas, and you will watch it and complete it yourself. I thought that No, we changed it yesterday. We changed it yesterday because I said Wednesday, because going forward will be Wednesday, and I made that misconception. I said that Wednesdays will be when your focus is due once we get into a normal week, and unfortunately we're not in a normal week. So it's going to be due Tuesday. So that way we can start weeks two content a little early because that's your first content you're being tested on. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to give you a jump start to the actual tested content and I'm trying to finish up this stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't have school on Monday, I'm going to be posting a lecture on Canvas of me sitting at my kitchen table doing a primary source. You might see two cats. They always used to come and do my Elmo teaching with me. You might hear my dog. There may even be a Henry in the house, for goodness sake, okay? But you are still accountable. I am teaching every single day. Every single day, yes? So if we have no school Monday, I'm still teaching your primary source. I'll be teaching it on Monday. It is your responsibility to go on Canvas. Point number two, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you noticed, Plant High School has a COVID problem, yes? A lot of people are already getting quarantined already. Probably every single person in this room knows at least two people, yes? Okay, with that being said, I think we can all agree as a collective, it is easier when we're together, yes? And that's easier to come to school if, it's easier to come to school and do things than be at home and try to keep up, yes? So I'm asking simply for you to take good care of yourself, yes? Okay, wash your hands, don't touch your face. I want you here every single day. Okay, you need to make the decision that makes the most sense for you and your family. Washing hands, hand sanitizing. If you want to wear a mask, great. If you don't want to wear a mask, do you. But COVID is a thing, and I don't want you to be quarantined because I want you here with me. Is that clear? So please just be familiar and be aware when you can take care of yourself. Please, yes? If you are quarantined, does that mean you should fall behind? No, because everything I do is on? I am recording a lecture right now, this moment, that will be on. So if you do get quarantined or if you're just sick and you're doing the right thing staying home because you're sick and you don't feel well, you should never fall behind because everything is on. Yes. All right, perfect. Everyone good? Everyone clear? Perfect. Let's go. We'll take the quiz when we get back, right? Yeah. All of your assessments will be done when you get back from quarantine or whenever you get back from school business or whatever reason you're here, but you can stay up on the content. Yes, Henry? Oh, well, thank you, Henry, for not passing it. All right, here we go. Who can raise your hand and tell me where we left off yesterday, please, and thank you. Who, 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 where do we leave off, people? What do you got for me? Uh, Zach? Uh, the first civilization was in the Fertile Perfect. First civilization is in the, uh, is in the Fertile Crescent, and that was the Sumerians, Babylonians, okay? So, they're the first ones to create the written language of cuneiform. Did we cover that? Okay, so, the first civilization is the Babylonians, also known as Sumerians, which we don't need to get into the details of why. So, Sumerians are your first major civilization. They create the writing system of cuneiform, which is right there. The reason why they create cuneiform is because they needed a writing system to keep track of religion and trade. Okay? They needed to keep track of religion and trade. Okay? With more and more people, we start having more and more problems. That makes sense. 
Throughout history, we're going to have booms of population. Okay? When we introduce um, Vietnamese fast-ripening rice in two weeks, we're going to have a huge population boom in Asia. Does that make things easier or more complicated? More complicated. So all of a sudden now we're in cities, we have a huge boost in population because of the Neolithic Revolution, things are getting more complicated. More people equals more problems. We're going to see that all over the place. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So who can tell me the difference between a civilization and an empire? What is the difference between a civilization and an empire? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. By the way, I asked my honors the same question today, and last period, crushed it. Just saying. Wesley, what's the difference between a civilization and an empire? Civilization has a government, and empire has, like, one big ruler. No. No. I mean, you're not wrong, but you're not right. What do you got for me, uh, Joseph? The empires are cumulative, and the civilizations are not. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Country of France. If, it's a, if I say the country of France, you're thinking of France being completely okay with their borders, yes? If I tell you the French Empire, okay, what do you know the people of France are doing? Conquering, yes? Okay, so France today is just called the country of France. Okay, when Napoleon Bonaparte was running France, it was called the? The French Empire. Do you see the difference between the two? A civilization is just a country or a territory with defined borders. And maybe write this down if you didn't know that answer. A civilization is like a country, if a co-op's in country, because they don't have countries yet, with a defined border, not changing. An empire is an expanding border. Okay? And that's where we will go. Okay, so we're leaving just civilization, and now we're getting into empires. Okay, so does anyone know who was the first major empire? The British, no, the British aren't really going to do anything until like the 1600s. Uh, what do we got, Henry? The Persians. No, it's not a bad answer though. The Persians are going to rise, but these civilizations started before them. Come on, come on. You know this. You read a bunch of stuff about them. Ansley. The Roman Empire? Nope, Roman comes second. Well, kind of third, it's the Persians. Uh, what do you got for me, Scott? Greek. The Greeks. The Greeks come first. The Greeks are your first major civilization. I would make a note of that. The Greeks are the first major civilization, which means the Greeks are the first ones to really start doing what? They're the first major empire. They're the first civilization to start really doing what, Neil? Um, sure. They're the first empire. The the, yes. They're the first major conquering power. Okay, the Greeks are the first major conquering power because they're the first real empire. All right, so the Greeks come and the Greeks fall. Okay, then we have the Persians. The Persians are really cool and they do all these different types of things. And then we have the Romans. The Romans and the Greeks never overlap. The Persians overlap, the Greeks and the Romans. You don't really need to know, but I do need you to know the Greeks rise, fall, gap. Rome rises, just listen, Rome rises, falls, okay? There's no overlap between the Greeks and the Romans, yes? Shake your head and say, yeah, got it, perfect. All right, <clears throat> so when we talk about our classical empires, you need to know the term urbanization. You need to write it down and put a box around it. Once we start getting into empires, we start having this thing called urbanization. Urbanization is going to come up all the time. It's going to come up huge again in the Industrial Revolution. What is urbanization? I mean, the definition is in the front, so if you didn't know it, you could know it, but you should be able to use your context clues and figure out what it is. And what is it, Hayden? It's when like people start to like move into one area and create cities. Yeah, it's when people start moving into the cities. So why are people moving into the cities at this point, Taylor? Why are people choosing to move to the cities during like the Roman times, the Greeks? Why are people choosing to move cities then? No, that's more industrial revolution. Come on, what do you got, Zach? That's where food is. No, you're telling me in downtown Tampa, I got a huge farm down there. Well, I mean, the cities back then. No, no, 
no, the city is still back then, do not have huge amounts of farms. No, they do not. They are packed densely in. Absolutely not. Chris? Protection. Protection is a good answer. It's not 100% the right answer, but it is a huge step ahead. Why are people moving into the cities? Why? What is happening? We got protection. I'll take that. That's a pretty good answer, Chris. Chris? Sort of. You're, not, you're, doing, you're doing better, but you're not quite better. What do you got for me, Olivia? To, like, grow and get stronger. Grow and get stronger? So you're going to move into a city to go and get stronger? Like, not, like, physically, but, like, as, like, a... Like a civilization? Like, yeah, why? Guys, what is happening in these cities? When you think of the ancient Rome, what are you thinking, James? Jobs. No, jobs is more like an industrial revolution thing. Why are people moving in the cities, Andrew? Entertainment? Like you're the getting there. You're getting there. Protection and entertainment is getting there, but we're not quite there. What do you got, Parker? To expand. To expand? No. What do you mean? I'm talking about an individual. Why would an individual move into a city? In the 1800s, people are moving into the city for jobs. Does that make sense? The Industrial Revolution is happening. You're moving to the cities like Boston, New York, and all that stuff so you can work in the factories, so you can send money home to your families back on the farm. Yes? That makes sense. Individuals are moving into cities in the 1800s for the Industrial Revolution. Why are people moving into cities in the ancient times? Why? What do you got? Simulation, I guess. Simulation. Okay. Creature comforts. That's why. What you're going to write down, urbanization is happening because of the improvement of life inside cities. So we need to be a little more specific because the improvement of life is a little big, yes? So what are things cities are doing to improve the quality of life? What are the Romans building all throughout the Roman Empire? There's a city in England called this because the Romans built the first one in England there. What are the Romans building? Awesome. <laughs> they do build the Colosseum, that is true. But no, what do you got, uh, Joseph? Bath. Yeah, they build bathhouses. So there's a city in uh, England called? Bath. It's just called Bath, the city of Bath. And what is built there? It's a bathhouse. A bathhouse. You know why? Because it's the only one in England. So when the Romans showed up and saw a bunch of Brit dirty British people, they were like, hell yeah, we got to find a bath. So they start building these things. More importantly, they're also building aqueducts. More importantly, they're building roads. More importantly, they are building government structures inside these territories. They are putting government officials in place to make things more successful and comfortable. Life is easier in a city for the first time ever, okay? People are moving there because of the quality of life. For instance, the Persians were the first ones to build hospitals. So if you are sick, there is some place where you can go and get help. They're the first ones in the world to do that. They are the only place in the world for a very long time where they can do surgery. That is how big and how important these cities are. People are moving there by choice because the quality of life is better. Do you see the difference? All right. Social structure. Here we go. Social structure is this heading. This is the basic social structure for every society. If it varies, it will be super unique, which means we're going to absolutely memorize that, but most of them fall into this. So, at the very top of normal social structures, what you need to know is the ruler slash leader. You don't have to draw a triangle if you don't want to. If you want to draw a triangle, it's due to you. But you could just, you know, write it down. Some of you are passionate about triangles, all right? So at the very top, you have a ruler. Your second tier are your religious leaders. Your third tier is your educated government officials. So at the top you have a ruler. The second stop you have your religious leaders. Third one is going to be your educated government officials. Your fourth tier are going to be your artisans and merchants. Your fifth tier is going to be your peasants, your poor people, your working class people. And then your sixth tier, your final tier, is what? Slaves. Slaves, yeah. Someone was like, because there's slaves everywhere. There's slaves pretty much everywhere in the world. Why is there slaves pretty much everywhere in the world at this point? 
Why, Henry? People are getting conquered. People are getting conquered. That's a great answer, actually. People are getting conquered. And are there machines to do anything? No. No. So what has to be done? Work has to be done. If you want to move a rock, what do you got to do? Joseph, put your phone away. Uh, Jake, put your phone away. You have to move the rock yourself. Do you want to go out into your backyard and move this huge piece of rock, or would you rather force someone else to do it? There you go, absolutely. If you're going to build the college, do you think the Romans are building the Colosseum for themselves? Yeah, they have slaves to do it, for sure. Okay, you need to know, you have, this is your normal social structure. So when we talk about any type of civilization for the rest of the year, this is the basic social structure. If things change uh, in every, things change in some civilizations, you will absolutely note it. I will put a big star and write, specialization of labor causes social structure. <clears throat> so, who can remind me what specialization of labor is? What is specialization of labor, James? Uh, it is, mm, oh, it's people need stuff to be done for them, and they don't want to do it themselves, so people specify it. Sort of. You're not wrong. You're not wrong, but you kind of sound like my slave definition <laughs> that I just gave. Uh, Savannah? Nope. Sydney? Nope. Cassidy? Completely and utterly wrong. Cassidy, what do you got? Yeah, of course. So I don't want to farm, so if I make good wine, okay, all the people who grow crops will buy my wine, so I get food uh, in exchange for the wine I make. That's specialization of labor. Skills people need that are willing to trade food for. That's specialization of labor. That is going to cause it. How does that cause this? How does specialization of labor ca cause stratification of social structures? Ah, Matt. So be careful. Now today in 2020 we have higher earning jobs, yes, because like I mean if you go to college and you become a doctor you make a lot of money, yes? Okay? Now if you go to college and you become a teacher, do you make a lot of money? No, you don't. Okay, those are higher paying jobs. That doesn't exist at this point. How do people what causes the social stratification? Henry? Like some people are doing more generic jobs they need a lot of people for, and some people are doing jobs that they only need like one person for. Let's just keep it simple, stupid. Some people are really good at their job, and some people are bad at their job, yeah? Okay? So if I have a bakery and Neil has a bakery, I bake the best bread, like ever. You love it, you dream about it, it's the best bread ever, and Neil's is like, eh. Who are you gonna go to? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna make more money? Mm -hmm. Whose family's gonna live more comfortably? Whose next generation is going to be significantly better off? Me. All the famous people in the city are going to come talk to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take pictures and hang them on the wall so you know celebrities are there. You know, do the whole thing. Neil, how's Neil doing? So, so yeah, I mean, the bread is so weak. You know what I mean? It's like, ugh. But that being said, that's how we start getting social stratification. Some people do really well at their jobs and have the earnings. Some people do not. This is also the foundation of what economic system? Specialization is the foundation of capitalism. If you have a good company, you rise. If you have a bad company, you fall. Yeah? Okay? So we start having all of these things happening all at the same time. Patriarchy, I think we're good on it. We get it. Yes? Perfect. All right. Centralization is also happening. So now that we're in empires, okay? So we're conquering people. We're expanding our territory. We also have to centralize our power. So what are some ways rulers, emperors, are centralizing their power? When I say centralizing power, that means people become more powerful. more powerful. So the rulers are getting to become more powerful. They're more powerful. They have more land. They have more power. They're more influential in the daily lives of their people. So how are rulers becoming more centralized? What are some ways? What do you got for me, uh, Hayden? Okay, I mean, that's kind of a bureaucracy, which we're going to kind of get to, okay? We start, what do you got for me? There you go. We start having standardization. That is the term you're using. If you said that, and your answer would have been perfect. Standardization is going to start happening. That means everyone is using the same measurements using currency, the same currency, using the same language. Now if I say how many pennies are in a dollar, the answer is? 100. There you go, it's a hundred. 
There's no varying. It's not 99, it's not 103, it's 100. That's standardization. If I say I have a dollar and I give you four quarters, is that still a dollar? Yes, because four quarters equals a dollar, and we all understand that is how our currency is based on standardization. Having that all unified makes your country stronger, yes? Do you think it's easy to do or hard to do? Hard. It's hard to do, absolutely. Keep in mind, a lot of uh, countries used to use the, the size of their king's foot as a measurement. What? So every time there's a new king, you have to measure their foot, and that would be the new measurement. Yeah, is that chaos? That's what the British used to do for a long time. Yeah, they used to do that. It used to be wild. Okay, so standardization is a huge deal. We also start employing more government employees in what we call bureaucracies. We used to know that term, bureaucracy. Put a big box around it. We're going to be talking about it all Yes, sir. It's right here for you, guys. Yes. Is this still in the Neolithic uh, age? No, we are in civilizations, girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're in empires, actually. Okay. You're okay. All right. <clears throat> Bureaucracy. Our government employ people to make the government run smoother. Okay. Governments are hiring people to make the government run smoother. More smoothly? More smoothly. Okay. Put a, put a nice little star, a little asterisk. The Chinese do it best. The Chinese are going to be the ones that do it best, but everyone does a bureaucracy. Raise your hand if your parents work for the government. I'm talking, I'm a government employee. I work for the state of Florida. Raise your hand if your parents, congratulations, your parents are part of the bureaucracy of it all. Your parents may work for the government, but you just don't know because they work for a private corporation that gets paid in government subsidies and stuff like that. But if your parents work for the government, they're a part of uh, the bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, people are hired to make the government work more efficiently. Does it work? Yes. Can it become, if you hire too many people, does it make the government more efficient or less efficient? If you hire too little of people, does it make the government more efficient or less efficient? Less. So, is there a delicate balance to a bureaucracy? Yeah. Yes. Some people do it well, some people do it poorly. Uh, the Chinese and the Persians happen to do it the best. Now, the Chinese, I already had to put a little asterisk to write Chinese. You need to know that they have a merit-based bureaucracy. Like I said, the Chinese do it best. What is a merit-based? When I say merit-based, what does that mean, Andrew? You get rewards for doing your job. Yeah. Let's go a little vaguer. You're not wrong, you're not right. What's merit-based? Like in general, I'm not talking about history. I'm talking, if I'm saying, ah, you are so, your merit is really intact on this. What does that mean? What do you got, Henry? You get reward for being a good person. A good person or doing a good job. Yes, merit is a good thing, yes? Uh, like merit scholars, yes? Isn't that the top tier of high school if you can reach that point? Merit scholars, that means you are the best and the brightest of what you do. A merit-based bureaucracy means it hires only the smartest people. Write that down. A merit-based bureaucracy means it only hires the smartest people. Is that a good thing? Do we want our government to only hire smart people? Does it only hire smart people here in the United States? No, it does not. Now, the Chinese only hire the smartest people. And it's a vocab term from this week. So who can tell me what they use to figure out what is, who are the smartest people? It's number 25 in your vocab. What is it, Izzy? Oh, I was going to say mandate of heaven. Please. No, mandate of heaven justifies the whole government as a whole. But inside that government, we have a merit-based bureaucracy. And a merit-based bureaucracy is put into place by what? I don't know exactly, it's like a standardized test. It is a standardized test. And what is that standardized test, Henry? The civil service exam. Civil service exam. You need to have that down. It's very important. It's very, very important. So, China is based, is a meritocracy. It is a merit-based bureaucracy. To work for the government, you're going to have the best, most comfortable jobs. Everyone wants to work for the government. I'm not saying in 2021. I'm saying this time. The best jobs are government-based jobs. If you work for the government, you have to take a civil service exam. 
which means only the smartest people get government jobs. Is that a good idea? Yeah, you don't want idiots in government. I mean, we can all agree, yes? No idiots in government, idiots make government hard. With that being said, it was supposed to give all people an opportunity. Do you think the rich kids still got in? Yeah. Yeah, because rich kids have the opportunity to have tutors, right? And those tutors are gonna tutors are gonna prepare them better for the exam than a poor kid who's really smart out in the sticks. Yes, same problems we have today. Guess what? Your SAT scores are supposed to be a meritocracy as well. If you learn really well on your SAT, you're supposed to have a really easy way into college. Because it's supposed to be a merit based system. Is that a true reflection of college today? Or is that a delusion of one? No original one, because it's gotten complicated, but technically it's supposed to be a matter of time. Okay. Trade. Trade. All right. So trade is your next heading, ladies and gentlemen. There are three major trade routes that you need to know at this time. Okay? So, trade. Your first major trade route is going to be the Silk Road. You know what? I like doing it back. So I'm going to do it back. All right, look at me. Over here, over here, over here, over here. Okay, so Silk Road, ladies and gentlemen. The Silk Road, and you should know, make a couple notes. The Silk Road connects East Asia to Europe. It is mostly road, uh, land-based, mostly land-based, with caravans. C A R A V A N S, caravan. It was mostly caravan. Started by the Han and Romans. Han, again, the Chinese side of things. And then the Romans. Okay. Who can tell me what goods are moving on the Silk Road? You can put this together here. What do you got? Silk. Yeah, silk. Silk is moving on the Silk Road. Okay, so silk is moving from where? Where is silk discovered? Sure. Taylor? Where is silk from? Well, not more specifically. Huh? East Asia, which is technically China, which is your crushing it tomorrow I'm teaching you all your region. Okay, so silk is coming from East Asia and it's going along the trade routes. Now, Asia is the best place in the world to be at this time. If you could choose anywhere in the world to leave, live and be the most comfortable, you want to be in Asia specifically East Asia, they've got the most money, they got the most comfort. Ladies, you don't really want to live there, but if you had to, you're going to live in some luxury, okay? It is a state secret how to make silk until the 1600s until uh, the Europeans go over and just ravage all of Asia and steal all the secrets, and here we are. What is the only thing the Chinese will accept in currency? What is the only... What do you think? They have silk, which is the most precious item in the world. What is the only thing they'll accept for it? Gold. Huh? No, they got plenty. They got rice for days over there, huh? Well, gold. Gold is the only thing they'll accept. So where do you think the wealthiest people in the world are? East Asia. East Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to give a pound of gold for a couple layers of silk. Which one's going to last longer? Which one's going to maintain its value? So if you're going to pick one, would you rather have gold or silk? Gold. Gold, but everyone in Europe wants silk, silk so that's why it becomes value. So the major exchanges on that route is going to be gold and, gold and silk. Okay? Europeans are selling gold. The Asians are, buy, are selling silk. The Romans are giving gold. All right, your second trade route is the Indian Ocean Basin. Your second trade route is the Indian Ocean Basin. Okay, it is, take a look back here, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to have East Africa. All right, write it down and then look. Just give me problems for that. It's going to have East Asia, South Asia, parenthesis, uh, it's going to have East Africa, South Asia, parentheses, India. Don't worry, you'll know all these terms tomorrow because I'm teaching you the math tomorrow. Uh, South Asia is parentheses India and East Asia parentheses China. Okay, so your Indian Ocean Basin is East Africa, South Asia, and East Asia. Five, four, three, two, one. Look at me. Stop writing. I want you to see something and then something more shiny. Okay, 
you're good, you're good. This is the Indian Ocean, yes? Okay, Indian Ocean Basin connects East Africa, South Asia, and China, yes? Or East, Af uh, East Asia. All of them are now trading in pretty much only ocean routes. Makes perfect sense. This is the most valuable place in the world at this time. Okay, you don't need to know that specifically. You need to know the term monsoon wind. M-O-N-S-O-O-N-S. -O -O it's also a vocab term. M-O-N-S-O-O-N-S. -O -O monsoon winds. There are directional winds that vary by the vary by season. Okay. Goods that are moving. East Africa, you need to write this down. East Africa is selling salt and gold. Why are people buying salt? Salt is the most precious item on earth, more valuable than gold for a long time. Why? What do you got for me? Hunter, why? Uh, um, that's actually a really great answer, and you are correct. There's another reason. If you don't eat it, you die. Bye. Oh. Yeah, if you don't have salt, you die, you die. <laughs>